<sighs> All right. The next one is SCP-174, a.k.a. the Ventriloquist Dummy. Luckily, this one is short. Thank fuck. Because <laughs> I think we went through the only long one. All right, let's let's do this. Item SCP-174, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-174 is to be contained within the Source Unit 07 at Site 19. Removal of SCP-174 from containment requires approval of two Level 4 personnel familiar with the entity. All right, I'll stretch. I'll stretch my burn. and I'll hydrate. Much better. It is preferable to use personnel with high psychic resistance scale scores when interacting with 174. All personnel in contact with 174 are to undergo psychological evaluation. Those who display obsessive or protective tendencies toward the item are to be treated with Class B amnestics and monitored for 72 hours. Addendum to Containment Procedures Redacted Following Incident 174-A, 174 in the main chamber of Storage Unit 07 are to be monitored at all times via video surveillance. Abnormal activity must be reported to Dr. Redacted immediately. Furthermore, a GPS tracking device is to be installed on 174 in order to expedite recovery should the item translocate outside of Foundation custody. Description 174 is a wooden ventricular figure measuring 53 centimeters from head to toe, with somewhat ragged clothing and slight damage to severe sections. Judging by the item's style and state of repair, it dates from the early 20th century. The eyes and mouth of 174 can be manipulated by means of mechanism inside the figure. When viewed in peripheral vision, subjects report on occasion that 174 is looking directly at them with an expression of longing or sadness. When subjects look directly at 174, this anomalous expression is not visible. Viewing 174 indirectly, such as a mirror as in a mirror or a live video feed, bears to increase the likelihood of this effect manifesting itself. Personnel in the vicinity of 174 report a general feeling of sadness or sympathy directed toward the figure, but cannot explain any reason for these feelings. Prolonged exposure can lead to personnel personifying the figure to greater extents. Those with particularly low psychic resonance resistance scale across scores will, in some cases, begin to act as if 174 were a living being. An example would be cradling as if it were a baby. When informed of their abnormal behavior, all personnel revert to standard behavior patterns for at least several minutes. Subjects who place 174 on their hand report an urge to converse with it. When questioned, they frequently report that the figure is lonely and needs companionship. The subject will also begin speaking for SCP-174 and man manipulating its expression. When speaking for the figure, the subject's voice will take on a higher-pitched childlike tone. Like my voice right now. Recordings taken with the highest sensitivity microphones have determined that at no point does the figure itself actually speak or make any discernible noise. Regardless of the subject's experience, the act will be almost perfect. The conversation will quickly move toward a discussion of the figure's emotional state, particularly in relation to its past, in most cases leading to the retelling by the figure of the story of how it was abandoned or mistreated. No one's story has ever been repeated and therefore which, if any, is true is unknown. Researchers have theorized that SCP-174 no bookworm, may have low-level telepathic abilities, as each story seems to be based around a theme that, that will have a particular resonance with the current subject. At this point, subjects will show great affection for 174 and will attempt to protect it from people who come too close or try to interact with it, in some cases with deadly force. Subjects will often often refer to 174 as their baby or use similarly strong terms of endearment when referring to it. 
This effect persists for several hours after 174, and the subject have been separated, and in at least one case, the effect had not dissipated two weeks after final interaction. Whether the effect would have lessened is unknown, as the subject in question has terminated owing to a lack of compelling reason for further study. Subjects who are completely isolated from 174 will become paranoid as the figure's safety and often undergo a mental collapse similar to that observed in, in mothers separated from young children. Class B or stronger amnestics have been shown to be effective in curing both the obsessive effect and a majority of any resultant mental trauma. However, almost all who undergo such treatment complain of feelings of loss and can become depressive. Addendum 174-1 Experiment Log Transcription of Video Footage Subject D-14285 Female 21 No History of Violent Crime Supervising Researcher Dr. Redacted Location Containment Cell A4 Site in Site 19 D-14285 is ordered to place 174 on their hand. Such as does so after initial hesitation. After several after several seconds, subject begins a mundane conversation with 174. After two minutes, the subject asks 174 what happened to you, at which point the figure begins to recount a story of how it was left behind and damaged in a house fire and subsequently discarded by its original owner. Note, subject records indicate that her house was the victim of an arson attack and, night and redacted. Oh my god, book. Anyways, subject begins to console the figure and, re and reassure it with standard positive statements. Figure remarks that it is lonely and wants to find friends. Subject begins to punch and pound the door with their free hand. When guards enter the cell, side arms raised, the subject recoils to the corner of the cell, creating the figure and whispering to it. Exact words not picked up by the microphone. Guards succeed in removing 174 from the subject and leave the cell. At this point, the subject screams, They have him, my wonderful baby, and begins punching and kicking the door in a futile, futile escape attempt. Note, at this point, Dr. Redacted ordered the experiment concluded. D-14285 was terminated after attempts to, to call her failed. This experiment was one of the first conducted with 174 before the, the efficiency of amnestics had become apparent. Addendum 174-2 Incident 174-A On redacted, Dr. Redacted entered storage unit 07 to find 174 sitting on the floor next to its containment unit looking directly at the main entrance door. The door to 174's unit had been sealed shut, with no access being having been logged in the previous week. After being replaced in containment, video surveillance was installed within storage unit 07 as a precaution against future translocations, and a GPS tracking unit was attached to 174. So wait, did I see it? That 174 doesn't speak? Hold on. Uh, it... The subject will also begin speaking for 174 and manipulating its expression. So no, bookworm, it cannot speak. All right. Here's the thumbnail. Wait. Okay, there it goes. I think we got a bit of a clip gate. I was confused by the log. That's fair. Wait. I thought that... Okay, so yeah, it doesn't stay with gender. Where did the blood come from? Where did the blood come from? I don't know. Because the doll itself isn't dangerous. It's when it's removed from a person. So, we be assured this is a four for clickbait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> 
There's fire, there's blood, they're making the devil look creepy as fuck. <laughs> I think we should go with four. So at least three, I don't know. You, see, you think three? Oh, I missed the fire. Yeah, there's fire. <laughs> they added it so much. Yeah, four sounds good. Okay. Alright, let's see, did you include license and, oh my god, of course. <laughs> you can't see it yet, Buckworm, but, three, two, one. They, at the very start, at the very fucking start. Something else, can we... yeah. I got rid of it. The very fucking start. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Not really. But oh well. Step back. I won't say it again. Okay. Okay. Just take. Just take a breath. Why do you do that again? Nobody <laughs> here wants to hurt you. Just put down the dummy, and we can talk. Put the dummy down? Have you been listening to a word I said? You're not getting it. Take another step and I'll slit my throat. Kloss let out a sigh and nodded at Chen. Do it. In the blink of an eye, Chen was on top. First off, okay, when she was the D-Class, she was unarmed. Yeah, the D-Class was unarmed. They had no weapons. And plus, they grow violent. Towards other people, not towards themselves. Already bad. And plus, they were carrying in a corner when they were about to take it. They were standing straight up and prepared to fight. I... Yep. Top of the deep Okay. Class, his knee on her windpipe. He signaled for the other two agents in the room to take her away. I don't recall you being so gentle, Kloss said with a wry smile. When you start getting your hands dirty, then you tell me how to handle the D-classes. What the fuck is between these two? <laughs> she was scared and protective. What makes it worse is this is... They definitely drew this as an Asian person, and it's a white person. <laughs> Like, making fun of the Asian person, which is not a good sign. Oh my god. They should just get, they should get, sorry. Oh my god, fuck. Jen and the doctor. Oh my god. Okay. Alright. Klaus picked up SCP-174. This little fella had been giving them problems for a while now. Though it didn't appear to be able to move, they had caught it looking at them in the peripheral vision from time to time. Besides that, surveillance footage had confirmed that it did seem able to turn its head slightly. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-174, Ventriloquist's Dummy. D-14285 had been affected hey. the most of all the subjects to date. Her psychic resistance scale scores were exceedingly low so they had expected a dramatic result. This hadn't been it. We need to invoke a stronger reaction. Stronger? What? She was ready to slit her own throat after two hours with Annabelle over there. What more do you want? As this usual, didn't Chen, happen. you're missing the point. I don't mean the subject's reaction to the doll. I mean what the doll can reveal about the subject. D-14285 had been introduced to the doll hours mm. earlier. It didn't take long before the doll started to speak. Oh my god. It explained how it had grown up in a lovely two-story house on the outskirts of Boston. It didn't say its this. Its childhood had been normal and pleasant, with little to complain about. Until the night of September 13th. A fire had started in the kitchen that night and quickly engulfed the entire house. It had barely made it out alive. The records had shown that this was in fact D-14285's own childhood. Her family home had burnt down when she was a child and had taken her family's life savings with it. Her life had gone from one disappointment to another, appearing all 
to stem back from this one incident. What? Do Where you did understand they get all this now the value of the doll? I mean, Chen part of it is correct, blindly. not all of it. <sighs> all right, let me spell it out for you. The doll is telepathic. It can read minds. So it doesn't just give out the information. But if you listen to the story, it's giving us the secrets and history of whoever it's interacting with. You can't lie to this thing. Ah, gotcha. That but we have is... other SCPs that can do that. Hold on. I don't think... Did it say specifically? It said that it's... No one's sorry. If it... Which, if any is, tr is true, is unknown. So it's going to sound a theme of the particular essence of the current subject. That doesn't... We don't know what they're saying. What the... The f... And plus, after the testing, they killed the D-class. They didn't do another test. They killed her. Oh my, what yes, are they doing? But some of them are dangerous. Others could lie. This thing, pretty easy to handle. Chen nodded in agreement. What is going on? As the man pulled up to the house, Kloss turned to face the agents. Okay, let's go over it one more time. The man inside. Intel points to him being the serial. Um, let's go back. It. It. Researchers have have theorized that SV-174 may low-level telepathic abilities as such as each story seems to be based around a theme that have particular resonance with the current subject. This is a theory. A theory. Which means this isn't definite. Oh my god. Okay. The killer the police have been tracking for the past three months. We suspect he has anomalous abilities. Likely, mind control. That's what? why we're here. We've almost caught him a few times, but each time, we're minutes too late. He's Where are we getting this information? It's not just bad luck. Okay, but why is the doll here? Oh my god. I want a confession. The doll should provoke him into telling us about the murders. Fair plan. Let's do this. What's happening? Lassiter, Crypt Key, stay tight on me. Once we're in, She's take the corners. Don't get too close. The three men slowly approached the front of the house. Oh, all what is quiet. happening? The only light they could make out came through the cracks in the attic wall. They crept towards Wait, the house, right? staying Yeah, as I'm quiet confused as too. What the fuck's happening? As they reached the front door, they heard Klaus scream from behind. There! He's gone out the back door. He knew we were coming. Chen, Lassiter, and Kripke took off after the man. He wasn't far. Chen would catch him in no time. But how did he know they were coming? As Chen looked to his side, he saw Lassiter trying to keep up with him. As he turned to his other side, Kripke was lagging behind. It's definitely added Kripke, so much violence. Get a move on. Yeah, we already got a four. Toilets. As Chen caught up to the man, he slid forward and hooked his ankles. The man tumbled over and came to a rest in front of them. He looked at them with a look of surprise and shock on his face. Who are you? Why'd you do that? Lassiter, take him back to the house. Kripke, catch your breath and follow up. Come clean, and this will all be over quickly. About what? I haven't done anything. The man was sitting in a chair in the basement, a small cut above his eye. He looked terrified, genuinely scared, and confused. So I think this has to be Stop playing the fool. <laughs> Tell us what you did. Of his wife. Tell us how you knew we were coming. <laughs> yeah. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Fine. We'll do it your way. Chen, bring the doll over. Chen walked in with the doll and approached the man in the chair. He set the doll down on his lap. What is this? It's your new best friend. See you in an hour. Ready for this? Chen nodded. They opened the door. The suspect was sitting in the same chair, but the doll was on his knee, and he appeared to be having a conversation with it. Have anything you want to tell us? The man looked between Kloss and Chen. Don't hurt him. I won't let you hurt him. He's been through enough already. Nobody wants to hurt anybody. Take a breath. Why don't you tell us a little story? Why don't you tell us his little story? His story? 
Yeah. What? What happened to this little guy? That's so sad. Oh. Oh. You don't know? It really is sad. The man told them how the doll had been beaten as a child. <laughs> what the His father fuck? had been cruel, and his mother hadn't protected him. His father had oh taken particular God. fascination with a hot poker it, they kept by the fireplace. The insignia was unique, a family crest from generations before. That fuck. star had been made, healed, and reburned countless times. As he got older, that fear turned into anger. He was tired of being scared, and he was strong enough now to fight back. His father wouldn't hurt him ever again. This anger, though, turned into something else. A sense of power. He wasn't like everyone else. What he the was stronger, fuck? better. He had a higher calling. He didn't need to play by society's rules. He wasn't one of them. What he was something else altogether. Immortal? Perhaps not. But he had to remain in the shadows while he did his work. While he taught his lessons to those weak, little children. Society wouldn't understand his art. Kloss looked at Chen with a look of disgust. I'll give it to you, Doc. That certainly was easier than beating it out of him. Chen nodded at Kripke. Kripke! Kripke! Snap out of it! What's up with you today? Take him away! Lassiter, get the doll! What the fuck? Kripke grabbed the man by the arm and pulled him out as Lassiter took the doll. No! No! Don't hurt him! It's not his fault! Don't you see? He tried to pull away from Kripke and grab the doll. Why are you doing this? It's not me! It's not me! It's the doll! I didn't do those things! He struggled and flailed his arms at Kripke, making brief contact and sending Kripke to the ground momentarily. Chen ran back and grabbed the man, walking him out as he cried. You okay? Kripke nodded, holding his hand. Get to the van. Have medical check out your hand when we get back. Nah, it's okay, sir. Just a jolt. I'll be fine. What in the fuck Chen is nodded happening? And walked away. As they left, he pulled off his glove and rubbed the back of his hand. Ow! SCP-174 is a wooden ventriloquist doll measuring 50 Wait, centimeters hold on, 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 hold on. Why does this look so bad? Why does this look so bad right here? Oh, gee, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? What is this? What is this? Okay, we're almost done. Is a wooden ventriloquist doll measuring 53 centimeters from head to toe with somewhat ragged clothing and slight damage to several sections. Judging by the item's style and state of repair, yeah, it, it dates from the early 20th century. The eyes and mouth of SCP-174 can be manipulated by means of a mechanism inside the figure. When viewed in peripheral vision, subjects report on occasion that SCP-174 is looking directly at them with an expression of longing or sadness. When subjects look directly at SCP-174, this anomalous expression is not visible. Viewing SCP-174 indirectly, such as in a mirror or live video feed, appears to increase the likelihood of this effect manifesting itself. Personnel in the vicinity of SCP-174 report a general feeling of sadness or sympathy directed towards the figure, but cannot explain any reason for those what feelings. The fuck? Prolonged exposure can lead to personnel personifying the figure to greater extents. Those with particularly low psychic resistance scale scores will in some cases begin to act as if SCP-174 were a living being. Discussion of the figure's emotional state, particularly in relation to its past, in most cases leads to the retelling by the figure of a story of how it was abandoned or mistreated. No one story has ever been repeated, and therefore which, if any, is true, is unknown. Researchers have theorized that SCP-174 may have low-level telepathic abilities, as each story seems to be based around a theme that will have a particular resonance with the current subject. They said it was a theory, but they said earlier that it was not a theory. What the fuck? Okay.
Okay. It's just hurting. Goes to show you can never truly know anyone. Okay. So they basically didn't. They added shit into here and removed some stuff. They also, even though it doesn't say the doctor's name, it's Dr. A something. So I missed it. No one story can be, has been repeated. Oops. That's fair book one. Yeah. Dr. A. As well as they didn't reveal, reveal important information about 174A. Where the doll moved on its own. So they only removed one character. I guess two. Because they did at least keep the D-Class. And luckily, they didn't get rid of the women, so we can put a zero down there. Added gore or violence? You agree with me, it's a four, right? <laughs> because what the fuck was that one added bit? Yes, that's not right. Deviates from the plot of the article. Probably a four again, because they added so much bullshit. As well as they went from it is it is fact to just a theory. Like, if, um, what? <laughs> that leaves it at a 30%. Okay.